All right, so let's go ahead and set up a patch request. So patch request basically allows us to update an entity or a resource or a record, whatever you want to call it, partially. Okay, so in the put request example, we are updating the entire resource based on whatever we provide in the request body. So everything just gets updated as a whole. For the patch request, we only want to be able to update either one or two or just a partial amount of fields without having to include every single field in the record that we're trying to update. Okay, because it can become annoying if you have, let's say, a user with 10 different fields and you don't want to include that all the time. So let's go ahead and set up a patch request. So app.patch slash API slash users. So we're going to reuse the same path, of course, because we can, since we're using a different request method. And then let's go ahead and pass in the request handler function in the as a second argument for the patch call. And since we're going to do the same thing um, with the check for the ID, for the route ID, sorry, the route parameter ID, I'm just going to go ahead and copy um, actually most of the stuff up over here, but I will explain again for those of you who are watching just the segmented part of the entire Express.js tutorial because I have this in a one hour, uh, about like a one hour to one and a half hour long video and also in its own individual videos as well. So in case you uh, are not watching the entire tutorial series, so what we're doing here is we are destructuring the request body object as well as the route parameter object. And then from the route parameter object, I'm destructuring the ID all from the request object. Okay. Then I'm going to parse the ID. So I'm basically taking the ID, which I'm expecting it to be a numeric value. So I use the parse int function to ensure that when I pass in the ID, the return value of parsed int or of parse int with that ID gives me a valid numeric value. So we use the is nan function to check to make sure that parse ID was parsed correctly and is not a number. Because if you were to pass in a string, let's say, you know, just random name instead of a number, then parse ID would resolve into nan, which is not a number. So we would return response.send status. Then what we're doing over here on this line, which is identical to what we did up here in the put request, is we're just simply searching for the user in the mock users array based on the ID. And that's where this whole line comes in. We pretty much just check if user.id is equal to parse ID. Okay. And additionally, if uh, find user index if its value is negative one, that means find index, the method call, uh, was not able to find that user um, by the ID. So that predicate failed. So it was not able to find the user. So it returns negative one. But if it returns anything but negative one, then that means it was able to find the user. So hopefully that makes sense. So we do this check right over here. If find user index equals negative one, then we return a status code of 404 because that means the user was not found. So hopefully that makes sense. I didn't want to have to rewrite that whole thing again, but I hope it is straightforward. So, and if it is a little bit confusing, just rewatch the previous video on the pull request so that way you understand. But that, um, I only did that for people who are watching the segmented part. Okay, so now the major difference here is the way that we update the user record. In the pull request, we updated the entire thing. You can see the only thing that we did not update, of course, was the ID, but we took the entire request body and we pretty much just uh, put it into, took all the field values and put it into this new object and took the object and assigned it to, well, we override, we overrid the current existing user. Okay. In the patch request, we're not going to override every single field. So the body itself, the request body might only contain let's say one field that we're trying to update. So any current field values that are in that user record must not be touched at all. So they must stay the same. So the way we can do that is first, let's reference mock users and pass in the square brackets, find user index. So that way, this is the user that we're trying to update. And what we're going to do is this. We're going to go ahead and take, we're going to copy this mock users uh, find user index. I'm going to reference it 
I'm going to use the spreader operator on this mock users reference at find user index. Okay. So I'm going to take all of the current field value pairs and put it into this new object. So all of the current values will be inside this new object. And then I am going to take all of the field value pairs from the request body, use the spreader operator on it and put it into this new object. So basically what I'm doing is this, I'm taking the existing user currently that we're trying to update, taking all of its key value pairs, putting it into a new object. Then I want to take the request body and all of its key value pairs that we are using to update the actual user and unpack it and put it into this new object. So that way it will override those current values. Okay. So imagine if you had the current user, um, let's say, for example, right over here, the current user is currently ID of three, username Adam, display name Adam. I'm taking all of this data right over here, putting it in that new object. And then the request body would uh, have whatever key value pairs that we were sen sending over to the server. So if we sent username, it would override, uh, it would use the request body's username field and override it with the current username field. So Adam would get overridden with whatever we passed in for the request body. Okay. And if we didn't pass in a display name, that's okay because display name would not be touched at all and it would stay the same. So hopefully that makes sense. And let's go ahead and just return. Uh, let's do send status of 200 because we can also send either 200 or 204 as a status code for patch as well. So let's actually try to use the patch request. So first let's grab all the users. Let's make sure everything is okay. So I'll go ahead and update Jack, but this time we'll use a patch request. So I'll just change it from put to patch. Uh, the ID is going to be number two. Okay, so now watch this. When I use the patch request, I'm gonna update the name, the username from Jack to Jackson. Okay, we got a 200 okay status. Now watch this, when I make a get request, you'll see that username is updated and display name stays the same. Now remember in the put request, if I don't include the display name, the display name will be overridden, okay? With the patch request, I can only update what I just wanna update. I don't have to include display name and put a value for it. I can just update username and then only username gets updated. If I only want to update display name, let's do display name to Jackson. I can just update the display name. If I want to update both, so let's update both back to Jack, Oops, not password, uh, display name. Jack. Okay, click send. And you can see now both fields get updated. So hopefully this helps you understand the difference between put and patch requests. You use both of them to update data, but the way that you update the data is different. Remember, put is used to update the entire resource. In our case, we would use put to update the entire user object. Patch is used to update only certain fields on that user object. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense.